Hello everybody. I want to talk to you today about, um, I want to go broad here. All right. So I have a couple of questions. How can we best structure our society so that freedom, liberty, and justice is optimized for all? How can we best organize to meet societal challenges? And how can we balance a triple bottom line? Triple bottom line, I'm so into, and I talk more about it in my last Nothing Burger podcast, which you can check that out on Facebook. Um, but I'm hearing a lot of talk right now about like socialism, if we're fighting against socialism, but some people think that uh, the government is really bad at doing everything. Other people think that everything that should, should be done by the government. So I just wanna have a discussion about like, well, what are we even talking about here? Because uh, I think it's the media is doing a terrible job of putting these things in perspective, and even some of the top politicians, I think, are just nobody is quite hitting the nail on the head, in my opinion. So um, here's the question: So what should be decided internationally? What should be decided nationally? What power should the states have? What about the counties and the municipalities? But then you also have private companies. What should they be? What should their responsibility and limitations be? Uh, and then what should that look like across? You know, you have multinationals and you have like small sole proprietorships. And then you also have nonprofits. And then you also have families. You have individuals. And then maybe you have co ops. And there's probably some that I'm missing here, okay? But you have these different entities. And what can their, what should their responsibility be? We have to keep this in mind when we're having these discussions. And so today, today I want to talk about the federal government and I want to wonder about what its role should be. And I'm going to make the argument here that given our current spending levels, um, well, I, I'm asking what adjustments can we make to run more efficiently and effectively? And in my opinion, we ought to invest more robustly in healthcare, education, and infrastructure while spending less on the military and subsidies for corporations that are failing to balance a triple bottom line. So let's go over our current spending. And I'm going to read this for a moment here. Stay with me. This is a good article that was put out by The Balance magazine. This is Kimberly Amadio published June 25th. So on March 11th, a request was put in for the 2020 budget. And I, I don't, ha I don't have an update of what they actually passed through, but, um, the proposal was 4.7 trillion. The U S government estimates it will receive 3.6 trillion in revenue. So that would create a $1.1 trillion deficit for that year. To fund the government, Congress must pass appropriations bills before the fiscal year begins. If Congress does not do so, it creates continuing resolutions to keep the government departments operational. And this was the government shutdown last year, so I don't think this happened this time. I, 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 I'll give an update in the comments section, but um, government spending is in three categories. Mandatory, which is at $2.8 trillion discretionary, which is at 1.4 trillion, and interest on national debt, which is 0.4, about 0.5 trillion. This article provides a detailed breakdown of each. So revenue, we get 3.6 in revenue, that's what we're estimated. Income taxes contribute 50% of that, Social Security and Medicare taxes, 1.3 trillion, corporate taxes are point. 2 billion, oh my goodness, I, I'm reading this and I can't believe it's that low, but anyways, uh, excise taxes and tariffs contribute 0.15 trillion, earnings from the Federal Reserve's holdings is 2% of the income that we get as a federal budget. Estate taxes account for the remaining 2%. Okay, spending. The government expects to spend 4.7 trillion, almost 60% pays 
for mandated benefits such as Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Interest on the U.S. debt will be $0.5 billion. Um, the remaining $1.4 trillion pays for everything else. That's discretionary spending. U.S. Congress changes this amount each year. It uses the president's budget as a starting point. So more on the mandatory spending. This will be $2.8 trillion. The biggest expense is Social Security, $1.1 trillion. Medicare is $0.7 trillion. Medicaid is $0.4 trillion. Social Security costs are currently covered by payroll taxes and interests on investments. I'll just read this. Uh, until 2010, there was more coming into Social Security Trust Fund than being paid out. Thanks to its investments, the trust fund is running a surplus now. But the trust's fund board estimates that this surplus will be depleted by 2032. Social Security revenue from payroll taxes and interest earned will cover only 77% of benefits promised to retirees. Medic Medicare is already underfunded. Medicare taxes don't pay for all benefits, so this program relies on general tax dollars to pay for a portion of it. Medicaid is funded by the general fund. Discretionary spending, 1.4 trillion. More than half of it goes towards military spending, including the Department of Veterans Affairs and other defense-related departments. The rest, the rest must pay for all other domestic programs. The largest are health and human services, education, and housing and urban development. There is an emergency fund of 0.2 billion. Most of it goes over to overseas contingency operations to pay for wars. A growing portion is set aside for disaster relief for hurricanes and wildfires. So more on military spending. The biggest expense was the Department of Defense base budget, 0.57 trillion. Overseas contingency operations were estimated to cost approximately 0.17 trillion. That pays for the war on terror costs triggered by 9-11. These, these include ongoing costs from the war in Iraq, and Afghanistan. Military spending included 0.2 trillion for defense related departments. These include Homeland Security, State Department, and Veterans Affairs. These departments also receive emergency funding of 26 billion. Okay, you should check out this article. There's, there's more information on here, but um, I'm going to go on now to, now given that we know it, how, how many people actually have looked at those numbers before? A lot of people are commenting on what they want to see happen, but how many people actually know the numbers? I think we've got we to gotta be able to add it up here. It's really important. So I've looked at this. I've been thinking a lot about this, and I'm not an expert. I'm just some guy putting a video out here, okay? But I, I really like to look at statistics, and I'm trying to figure this out, man, because I, I want to live in a great society. And right now, I just feel like some people are really falling through the cracks. So what can we do? This is what I think we can do. I think we can increase federal funding for high-quality health insurance for all Americans. High-quality I think we can increase federal funding for lifelong education for all. This is pre-K, primary and secondary, undergrad to PhD, vocational and job, jobs training. All the way through, there's no tuition paid by the student. This is funded federally. Okay? And then I think we can do infrastructure based on triple bottom line best practices. That way we know that the investment that we're making now, we're not going to have to tear it down because we realized we screwed it up in, in 50 years down the road. Because we're going to be looking ahead. Okay? 
and we might have to pay, pay a little bit more up front. This is what the triple bottom line is. We might have to pay a little bit more up front in order to get ecological and societal benefits, but we're going to do that because in the long term, it's going to pay off big time. Okay, here's the problem. Our current tax code based on income with tons of exemptions and tax breaks, this won't work. We can't fund it that way. If you look at uh, health insurance for all, and they call it Medicare for all, but I'm calling it health insurance for all because that's what we're talking about, the health insurance, the, the ability to go see a doctor. Everybody, sh and, and the ability to, not only to get primary care, but also to get uh, emergency care and high quality. Anything that happens to you, man, and you should be able to go to the hospital and not have it be based on your wealth, whether or not you get treatment, okay? This is, and you should watch my other video talking about um, tax, the tax code, and there I highlight how much wealth we actually have as a country. We're doing tremendously well as a country. We, we are the richest and most powerful country in world history. So what are we doing being so skimpy on health and education. These are so foundational. Um, okay, and yeah, so I talk about the tax code more in the other video, but basically the way we do it now, it's not gonna work. If we wanna fund these programs robustly, we have to, everybody is in, there are no exemptions and it's based on wealth. Not income, but wealth. All right, so now what should we cut? Well, we, there is so much room to be just as powerful as a nation around the world and not spend so much on the military. In fact, we cause problems and then we have to pay for it. So we need to end our status quo of provocation and hegemony in the name of profits for war industries. We need to focus on diplomacy, de-escalation, and disarmament. This will cost way less and we will have just as much power and influence in the world. And then the other thing we gotta cut is we gotta cut corporate subsidies. The bank bailouts, that was huge uh, socialism. Okay, you wanna talk about socialism, this is what we do. We do bank bailouts, look at how much we've spent on oil subsidies to get that industry off of the ground, that's socialism. We do socialism in in farming, this is not nearly as big of an issue, but still this is like a smaller example of something that I think we're wasting money on. We're basically, in farming, we make it very difficult for small farmers because we subsidize big farmers, and we make it more difficult to be ecological because we subsidize monocrops, non-ecological practices. So there's a lot of, and you can get into all these different programs, and you can probably, there's probably fat to be cut, and we need to be, be serious about that. We're gonna make some hard decisions in there, but in general, we gotta end the tax loopholes. These are easily exploited by the wealthiest companies. Amazon paid zero dollars, and it was by far the most profitable, co profitable company in the United States. Yeah, we cannot, we, we will go bankrupt unless we have integrity and justice in our tax code. Okay, so, and I can show you how I got these numbers, but basically this proposal that I have here, it would cost 5.5 trillion per year. That's a bit bigger than what we have, but there will be far better services for those who need it. There will be better health outcomes. Therefore, there will be better job performance, greater economic participation. And meanwhile, this takes pressures off of small businesses. Uh, businesses no longer have to be partly in the business of insuring their employees. That's now going to be, they're going to be able to spend more time taking, growing their business and doing what they do best, whatever it may be. And so this is going to take the pressure off of small businesses. This is going to promote entrepreneurship. And at the same time, that 5% or, so, or so of those whose taxes will increase they're gonna to increase to a degree that is ineffectual to their freedom and liberty and their ability to grow, further grow the economy and participate um, competitively in the economy. Okay, so here's my take. Yeah, the government shouldn't be doing any, everything, 
But to say that the government is always bad, that's, that's not true either. Government can work if it's designed properly. But right, right now, we got a long way to go. And we the people have the power to change things. But we got to advocate for ourselves. All right, so that's what this is about. Um, and I look forward to talking more about these topics in detail in the coming weeks, especially on health insurance. So thanks a lot for listening. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and also feel free to comment because I would love to start a dialogue around this. Whether or not you agree with me, I, I, I'll entertain uh, any comments either way. Okay, take care.